This video is about metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. All elements can be classified as metals, nonmetals, or metalloids. This depends upon their position on the periodic table, which is dependent on lots of things, but particularly their electron configuration and also their properties. What is a metal? So a metal is an element which generally is malleable, which means that it won't shatter. For instance, if you hit it with a hammer, it would dent rather than shatter. It has a high density, conducts electricity, and also conducts heat. Is ductile, which means that you can stretch it out into long wires, so you can grab a bit and pull it out and stretch it out. Usually has a luster, which is the word that we use for shiny, and is generally a solid at room temperature. So that means it has a high boiling point and a high melting point. There is an exception to that, which is mercury, which is a liquid at room temperature, but all other metals are solids at room temperature. Usually metals will form positive ions and they can form alloys, which is a mixture of different types of metals. Generally, we find them on the left and the middle of the periodic table, and we'll look at that in a second. Metals include alkali metals, alkali earth metals, transition metals, and some others as well. There are lots and lots and lots of examples of metals, and I would be here for a long time if I just sat and read all of the different examples of metals for you. Some of the ones that probably first spring to mind when I talk about metals are things like iron, copper, aluminium, zinc, gold, and there's heaps, 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 heaps more. The sorts of metals that might not spring to mind when you think of something metallic are things like potassium and calcium and sodium. Now, these are all metals, but you can't go and buy a potassium bar like the way you can buy an iron bar. You can't go and buy calcium wire the same way you can buy copper wire. You can't go and get sodium foil the same way that you can get aluminium foil. And that's because these guys are very reactive metals and so they usually exist in their ionic form and bound to something else as a compound. These me metals are typically less reactive and so you're much used to seeing them when you think of a piece of metal as something that's shiny and has luster and that and is malleable and conducts electricity. These ones are probably the ones that you think of. But it's important to realise that all of them are metals. It's just that some metals are far more reactive than others. Metals on the periodic table are found on the left-hand side and all the way across the middle. Make sure we get aluminium there. Hydrogen breaks a lot of rules when it comes to chemistry. So Sometimes on a periodic table you'll see hydrogen here. Sometimes you'll see it listed over here because it's not a metal, but it sort of behaves a bit like a metal in some ways, but it's really a non-metal. We're not going to consider that today, but I just want to explain why hydrogen's not there. So all of these ones here in blue are metals. This group here, not including hydrogen, so from lithium all the way down, this first group here, is the alkali metals. This group here, from beryllium all the way down, is the alkali earth metals. This middle chunk here is the transition metals. And then down the bottom here, we have the lanthanides and the actinophytes. Anything that happens down the bottom here, like these sort of down around this sort of area, we often call heavy metals as well. What is a non-metal? 
A non-metal is an element which is not a metal. It generally does not conduct electricity, although there are exceptions there and graphite is the most common of those. It, they generally form negative ions or don't form ions at all. Non-metals are generally found on the right hand top corner of the periodic table and we'll look at that in a minute. Non-metals include halogens and noble gases. Examples of non-metals. Non-metals include the noble gases, which is helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. They also include the halogens, which is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. And they also include other non-metals, which is carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, and hydrogen. So non-metals on the periodic table are found in this top right-hand corner, so these pink guys here, as well as hydrogen. Hyd as we said before, hydrogen breaks lots of rules. Some periodic tables will actually list hydrogen as sort of on its own in a little box there because it doesn't really fit in any other spot, but it's definitely a non-metal. This group here is the noble gases, which is helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. This group here is the halogens, which is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. And then the other non-metals is this little group of six guys here, where we've got calcium, sorry, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and selenium, and hydrogen sitting over there. So now let's consider what is a metalloid. A metalloid is an element which has some properties of metal and some properties of nonmetals. It's found on the diagonal zigzag line through the periodic table, and we'll have a look at that in a sec. Can, and metalloids can also be called semi-metals for obvious reasons. On the periodic table, there's this diagonal line that comes down the middle here that splits the metals and the non-metals. And most of the elements found on either side of that diagonal line are the metalloids. There's some that are clearly metals or non-metals, but most of them share the properties of both. So we've got boron, and silicon, and germanium, and arsenic, and antimony, and tellurium. So those elements are all metalloids or semi-metals. In summary, metals are elements which are usually malleable, have high density and conduct electricity and heat and are ductile and lustrous. They are generally solid at room temperature. Non-metals are elements which generally have the opposite properties of metals, but there are exceptions. Metalloids, which can also be called semi-metals, have a combination of properties of metals and non-metals. And the periodic table is used to help predict and understand metals, non-metals, and metalloids.